Hello peptide lovers, today we're going to react to the discussion Derek from More Plates More Dates had with Dr. Peter Atia about BPC-157. This is the first time I've watched the whole podcast in its entirety, and quite frankly, I'm impressed, and you'll see why. Before we dive into the video, I wanted to pose a question to you all because I'd like to hear your thoughts on something. Would you be interested in any community features? I've noticed that there isn't much of a collaborative environment out there for those who enjoy evaluating peptides to discuss people's experiences, new research, what the data shows thus far, risks, benefits you've noticed, hence why I made this channel in the first place. But if you think a forum or a discord channel would be something you're interested in, or you have anything else you'd like to see, just leave a comment below. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks in advance. Without further ado, let's get into this video. Mm. All right, a word on BPC-157, which, you know, is yeah it's a peptide yeah yeah so body protection compound i think is what the acronym stands for 157 it's like a it's a peptide that's produced endogenously in your gut and it seems to have some like angiogenic properties that can be useful for certain injuries but it's like i've seen some pretty remarkable improvements in like minor not complete tears um and certain injuries that are like of lesser i don't know won't i don't know like i'm not i'm not overly familiar with it to a point that i could say with any certainty that it's going to be efficacious for fill in the blank thing but it seems to be something that if i had an area with low blood flow like a i don't know a tendon issue or something that's when I would be looking to something that's pro angiogenesis. Cause it's like, I also worry about cancer cell proliferation from something that's pro growing blood vessels. So that is a concern with BPC for sure. Cause I see some, and does it need to be injected locally for it to have maximum efficacy? So let's just assume you tear your rotator cuff. Um, it's thought like this was one of the bro myths we were taught back in the day is inject it right into the injury site. And I now don't believe that to be the case. It seems at least the last I heard that, you don't need to do that. And do we hold out any semblance for hope that we might get a study that would shed light on this? Because how could we ever possibly know yeah. the counterfactuals here? And how could we possibly disentangle, you know, the single user experience on all these things? Yeah, I don't think so. I think it's something that so many people use at this point. Like, I imagine you can't like patent anything or make any money off of studying it you'd probably know better than me off of how pharmaceutical pipelines work but i imagine it's kind of at a point where so many compounding pharmacies sell it the problem i see mainly i don't really think it's not good to use like i would probably use it if i had a minor injury to somewhere i needed more blood flow but i do think a lot of people use it proactively far too often for something that is directly intertwined with increasing i think it's veg f and yeah. is like super correlated with cancer growth like to me that would freak me out people who are using it like preventatively a lot of athletes use it as a preventative measure to avoid injury or rehabil rehabilitation when it's not necessary and i think that's overkill and risky as hell personally got it yeah so for those of you who have been with me for a while, you probably know by now that this is exactly what I like to hear. A fair, research-derived evaluation of the compound's risks and benefits, as well as what we really know. I'm impressed by the research Derek does into what he discusses, and with regards to peptides in particular, you'll find me pressed to find a significant disagreement. We're on the same page here. Let's evaluate some of the points that they discussed, as they are things I've said in the past that are a bit in contention within this peptide space. Space. Now I've got like 10 videos on BPC-157 out there and I'll link some of the more informative ones in the comment section below. I've noticed it's among the favorite peptides of myself and many of my viewers that especially in rodent studies has shown some truly remarkable outcomes, not dissimilar from surgical intervention. As a body protection compound derived from human gastric acid, it's angiogenic properties that serve to increase formation of new blood vessels and perfusion to injured sites 
sites is what makes it such an interesting candidate for diffuse physiologic repair. And as Derek said, as I've stated in the past, as miraculous as that is, there is a concern that these angiogenic properties can translate negatively, as this is an identical characteristic of tumor cells that require formation of blood vessels to spread. And I appreciate that Derek mentions that BPC-157 increases expression of VEGF. VEGF stands for vascular endothelial growth factor. It's a growth factor protein involved in formation of new blood vessels and increasing blood flow to injured sites from development as an embryo throughout adult years. However, its overexpression is where we can develop problems, from retinal damage to spread of cancer. Many cancers cannot spread if it's not supplied by collateral blood flow, and thus targeting VEGF is being evaluated in managing certain types of cancers as a sort of anti-cancer therapy. This is something wholeheartedly worth acknowledging with use of BPC-157, especially if you're hereditarily susceptible to certain types of malignancies or if you plan on using it long term. Additionally, I have spoken before on that site-specific injection of BPC-157 sounds bro sciency given the systemic nature of subcutaneous and intramuscular injections. And I'm happy to see that, although plenty of people anecdotally disagree, that Derek shares a similar viewpoint. All in all, this was a very interesting and refreshing clip from an overall awesome podcast, and I encourage you to check out both Derek and Dr. Atia as their evaluations of whatever they discuss are well-researched and adequately evaluated. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to pound the like and subscribe button. I remember a year ago when I was struggling to get 100 subscribers, and now that we're at just over 1,000, I'm beyond grateful for you all. Enjoy the rest of your day. You deserve it.